Well, it has been 10 years since U.S. Airways made that miraculous emergency landing on the Hudson River. Every time I take off from New York City from JFK and I look at the Hudson, I just think about that right. day just because of what Captain Sully Sullenberger was able to do. All 155 passengers survived that. Now some of the survivors are speaking out about their experience and how it's still affecting their lives. Our colleague Omar Villafranca spoke with one of the survivors, Trip Harris, about the incident 10 years later. How does it feel to be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the miracle on the Hudson? 10 years. It's amazing. Uh, ten, 10 years that I very easily could have not had. Um, I'm celebrating every moment right now. Uh, walk us through, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of memories you have of that day, some things you might have forgotten, but there's usually something that always is vivid in your mind. Can you take us to that moment that, that is, is just burned into your memory? I think when uh, Captain Sully announced Brace for Impact, it uh, really woke me up. Um, and it, uh, you know, it did different things for different passengers, mm -hmm. but for me, uh, you know, life flashes before your eyes. I, uh, it didn't flash before my eyes, but what I thought about was everything I was gonna miss out on. Uh, my son was two at the time, mm -hmm. and it was all about him growing up. and. What was he going to do without me, and and who's going to teach him to kick a soccer ball or throw a baseball? So it was it was really uh, all about family and the opportunities that I was going to miss out on if if things weren't successful on that flight. W was that your moment of clarity? Was that the what really became important in your life that you realized this is what matters, not everything else I'm chasing? That's right. I, I didn't think a, a single thing about work. It was all family and yeah. quality time. And it really put in perspective um, how important the, the, your family, your friends, uh, is, is really in perspective. Um, and I, I was very guilty of spending a lot of time focused on my work life and, and not good quality time with my family. And uh, so it was, a, it was awakening for me. Ten years later, how do you deal with this? How do you cope? Have you gone on another commercial flight? Yeah, I, <laughs> I fly pretty often. Um, okay. As a matter of fact, um, when I was there, um, we won a contract, and I, I flew that same route for like a year and a half. And it took me a solid six months of, of flying to, to get comfortable. And it's, it's a new comfortable. I have to keep myself busy playing on my phone, doing something to take my mind off of, of flying uh, so that I, I, I don't, uh, you know, don't have a panic type of attack. Uh, not that I've had one, but it's... Yeah, I just need to keep myself busy so I'm not thinking about that day. Do you chat up the person next to you? Have you ever told them, like, I was on that flight? Has that ever come up on a commute flight? A few times. I try not to talk about it on flights. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but, I mean, if, if you're a survivor of this, what kind of reaction do you get from somebody sitting next to you? They're like, holy cow, <laughs> I remember where I was at. I remember exactly what was going on the day that it happened. Um, it's it's a story that's that everybody resonated with back 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it's, you know, the fact that everybody survived and it was such a good outcome, mm -hmm. uh, it really makes it a great story to talk about. And, uh, you know, I love to share it. Um, but, you know, on a, on a flight, probably people don't want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you mentioned the, fight, the outcome. How do you think that outcome would have been different if Captain Sullenberger hadn't been the pilot that day? Do you think it would have had a different outcome? I... I, I think he made all the difference in the world. Um, he, uh, he was so calm and so collected and he knew exactly what he needed to do. I don't know how many pilots uh, really would have had that discipline and that ability to focus in such a, a dire situation. So I, I'm glad he was in the seat. I would fly with him any day. <laughs> As would a lot of people across the U.S. and the world. Now, you and other survivors are gathering at the Carolinas Aviation Museum in Charlotte, North Carolina, to mark that anniversary. How does it feel uh, to see the other survivors? You're almost in an exclusive club that you're glad you're in, but nobody really wanted to be in in the first place. But what is it like to see the fellow passengers? You know, it's like a second family. We, uh, we get together quite often, uh, at a minimum on the anniversaries, but usually try to get together more often, whether uh, there's groups in New York or here in Charlotte. And, um, you know, we're all, you know, uh, members of the same Facebook groups. We mm -hmm. post stuff back and forth. It is like a second family. L looking back on all of it, uh, you know, you guys survived. It was a, a cold January. 
what did you learn from this experience? And is this a, a bookmark? Is this a, you know, birth of a child? Is this that important in your life? It is. It, uh, it woke me up from being kind of a robot of, you know, work, 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 and then rest on the weekend to really, you know, I, I still work and I still just drive to do the best for, for my clients. But then after that, right, when I get home, it's, it's about family and it's about building those memories that I thought I would never be able to do as, as we were going down. So it, uh, it really has changed my perspective and made every moment in life more precious. You think it made you a better dad? Uh, absolutely. Uh, better dad, better husband. It, uh, it uh, really, really changed my life. Well, I'm glad you're here to tell us about it. Trip Harris, thank you very much. Thank you.